Okay, welcome back. In this section of the video, we're going to set up an Amazon EC2 instance and install Jenkins on it. So I'm assuming that you have already signed up for an Amazon Web Services account and that you're logged into the Amazon Web Services console at aws.amazon.com. So once you're logged in, you should see a screen that looks like this and we want to select EC2. Now, if you're one of my students following along with this video, you want to make sure that you're in the North Virginia region. And if it doesn't say North Virginia up here, just click this and select US East North Virginia. That's important if you're one of my students. If you're not one of my students, you can use whichever region you like. So assuming that we're happy with our region, we'll go down and click on Launch Instance. Now for this video, we're going to set up Jenkins on an Ubuntu Server 13.10 instance. Uh, Ubuntu Server 13.10 is the latest version of Ubuntu Server at the time of this recording. But of course, if you are watching this in a year from now, you would want to select the latest version of Ubuntu Server. So I'm just going to scroll down here. Here we have Ubuntu Server 13.10. We'll make it a 64-bit instance and I'll just click on select. We now have to choose how powerful of an instance we want, so how much RAM and how much CPU power. You generally, for uh, a continuous integration server, you want something reasonably powerful. Uh, so for the purpose of this video, I'm going to select general purpose and select m1.small. Now, if you're following along with this video and you want to stick to the free tier, so you don't want to be charged anything, then you want to make sure that you're selecting a micro instance, t1.micro. Uh, but for this video, I'm going to use m1.small, and that gives us 1.7 gigs of RAM, so plenty of RAM for Jenkins to use. Okay, so once we've selected our instance type, we'll click on Next, Configure Instance Details. Uh, everything here can be left as the defaults. We'll click on Next, Add Storage. Again, leave everything here, and then click on Next, Tag Instance. Now, if you're one of my students, um, the name that you assign to your instance here should be your team number. So if you're team 99, then you'll type in team 99. This just um, allows you to set a name for your instance so that when you're looking at it in your list of EC2 instances, you can see what it's used for. So if you know, you might want to name it Jenkins or Continuous Integration Server. But again, if you're one of my students, make sure you name it after your team number. All right, so clicking next, we will configure our security group. So the security group is essentially the firewall for your EC2 instance. By default, Amazon blocks all incoming ports to your EC2 instance. And so we have to tell Amazon, well, which ports do we want to open to the internet? So I will say, create a new security group. And again, if you're one of my students, make sure that you name it after your team number. So I'll just say team 99. Uh, we want the SSH port left open because we need to be able to SSH into our instance. But we also want to be able to access it through the web via HTTP. So we have to open up the HTTP port. So I'm going to click on add rule and we'll select from the protocol dropdown HTTP. And there we go. So now we have SSH and HTTP both open. And so I'll just click on review and launch. Okay, so assuming that we're happy with everything, I've selected m1.small, we have opened up the SSH and HTTP ports, we're good to go. So we'll click on launch. And we are now asked to create a new key pair. So we don't use passwords when we're authenticating with an EC2 instance. For your security, they actually set up a public private key pair. So they retain your public key on your instance and you download your private key. And that way you don't have to use a password when you're authenticating and it's much more secure. So we're going to select uh, create a new key pair. Again, if you're one of my students, you'll want to name it after your team name. So we'll say team 99 here, and then I'll just say download key pair. And that's going to download this PEM file here, which is my private key. Now for your security, Amazon does not keep a copy of this private key file. So make sure that you do not lose it. If you lose it, then you lose access to your instance and you will have to destroy it, terminate it and and uh, recreate it. So make sure you don't lose it. Also, uh, as a general rule of thumb, you don't want to check any sort of private data into a source code repository. So don't check in your private key to your GitHub repository. Don't check in any kinds of passwords. Sensitive data does not belong in a version control system. Okay, so once we have that key pair downloaded, we'll click on Launch Instances. 
and then you can click on the instance ID of the instance you just created and you'll see that it's in the pending state so it'll just take a few minutes for it to start up. Okay once it's in the running state you can click on it and then you want to grab your host name so where it says public DNS here you can just grab the host name and make a copy of that and now it's time to SSH into our instance so we'll switch to a terminal window Okay, so now we're going to SSH into the instance. Uh, you need to make sure that you know the path to the private key that you downloaded. Mine is in my downloads folder, so I'm going to type in ssh-i, that's the identity file, and then I'll specify the path to the identity file, in other words, to the private key. So mine is tilde slash downloads team99.pem, and then I'm going to say Ubuntu, that's the username, Ubuntu at, and then we'll paste in the host name. So, the host name of my EC2 instance, pressing enter. Uh, you'll get this warning when you first SSH into any server. That's okay, that's normal, we'll just say yes. And it gives me this error message about the key file being unprotected. That's just SSH telling me that, hey, the permissions on the key file allow it to be read by any user on this system, and it's not going to allow that. It wants it to be more secure. So we're going to say chmod 600 on the team99.pem file or whatever your identity file is and that will lock it down so that it can only be read by your own user account okay so we'll try that command again and there we have it now we're connected to the instance now i'm just actually going to log out of the instance for just a moment by typing in exit i just want to show you a quick tip that you can use to quickly connect to any sort of server uh, so let's so rather than having to type in ssh-i and then specify the path to your key every time and then specify the username and the host name, that's a lot of typing. So we would ideally just want to be able to type in something like ssh ec2. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. What you want to do is create a file in your .ssh directory called config. So we'll create that file and we're going to call we're going to add the line host ec2 so this is the alias that we want to be able to say ssh ec2 okay so you can use whatever alias you want here and then we'll say that the host name is whatever the host name is of our of our instance so you can just paste that in there the user is ubuntu and the identity file is the path to your private key and i'm actually going to move that into my .ssh folder so i'll just say tilde slash dot ssh team 99.pem and maybe we'll just make this look a little prettier here line these all up and there we go so now I'll just move my private key from my downloads directory into my ssh directory and I should now be able to just simply type in ssh ec2 and there we have it now I'm connected and it's much easier for me to connect Okay, the first thing that we want to do is just do some general server setup. I've noticed um, in recent editions of Ubuntu Server on Amazon EC2 that the locales are kind of messed up. So we'll just fix up the locales first of all. Now, all of the commands that I'm going to be entering, I will put in a public gist on GitHub, and I'll put the link to that um, in the description of the video. So you can check out that link, and you can get all the commands from there. So the first command that I'm going to enter is sudo apt-get install and the package we want to install is something language pack en which will fix up our locales for us. So I'll hit enter there and it's going to ask me to confirm. I'll just say yes and press enter and it's going to install that package and that'll just take a few moments. And once that's done, we'll set our sights on installing Jenkins. So I'm going to first add the repository for the Jenkins package um, and we need in order to do that we need to install the public key for the Jenkins repository to tell Ubuntu that this is a trusted repository so I'm just going to paste in a command here in order to do that again you can get that from the gist that I've linked in the video description so we'll just add that key and then we want to tell Ubuntu uh, where the package repository is so I'm going to paste in another command to essentially add that package repository to Ubuntu's list of repositories. And then finally, once we have this repository set up, we're going to type in sudo apt-get update to update the list of package or of packages, I should say. And then finally, we can simply install the Jenkins package with sudo apt-get install Jenkins. 
and we'll just confirm that choice and hit enter and it'll just take a few minutes to set that up. Now, once the Jenkins package is installed, we can actually confirm that Jenkins is running by typing in PSEF grep Jenkins. And you can see that Jenkins has been started up and it's actually running on HTTP port 8080. The reason for that is that the Jenkins package, uh, it actually created a new user called Jenkins on the system. And um, that allows Jenkins to be run as an unprivileged user. We don't wanna run it as root for security reasons. Now an unprivileged user cannot start up uh, a server on a privileged port like HTTP port 80. So it's running on 8080. On the other hand, we don't wanna have to specify port 8080 every time we wanna connect to this Jenkins server from our web browser. So what we're going to do is set up Apache web server to proxy requests uh, from port 80. So any request that comes in on port 80, it's going to proxy it to our uh, Jenkins server on port 8080. So the first thing that we will do is install the Apache web server. So I'll say sudo apt-get install Apache2 and we'll just confirm that. And there are a few Apache modules that we'll need to install. So we're going to say sudo a2nmod proxy and we also need uh, a2nmod proxy underscore http. The next thing we have to do is configure Apache to actually proxy the requests from port 80 to port 8080. So I'll say sudo vim etc apache2 sites available and then we'll call it jenkins.conf. Now if you're not familiar with vim to go into insert mode you press i. Uh, before I do that though I'm just going to paste in some configuration. So I'm going to say set uh, colon set paste and then I will go into insert mode by pressing I, and then I'll just paste in the configuration details again from the gist that's linked in the video description. Uh, so what you want to do is scroll up, so press escape and then scroll up using your arrow keys to the server name field here, and you want to paste in your host name for your EC2 instance. So I'm going to type D dollar sign to delete until the end of the line, and then I'll just press A to go into insert mode, and I will paste in my host name. Okay, pressing escape and typing colon WQ to save and quit. And now we simply need to enable our new site that we've set up here in Apache. So we'll say sudo a2n site Jenkins, and then sudo service Apache to reload to have it reload its configuration. Switching into the browser, we should now be able to access our Jenkins server through the web. So I'll go try visiting HTTP colon slash slash, and then I'll just paste in whatever the host name is of my EC2 instance. And you can see that Jenkins is now running on port 80. So in the next section of this video, we will look at configuring Jenkins.